Richie Sims spent 26 years in prison, ending his sentence at Wandsworth. He credits it with helping change his life. But released a decade ago, he says it no longer offers hope to the men, just despair. It's time to change. It's time to get the places to how they should be, because it's not fit for purpose. Former prisoners joined families of men in Wandsworth right now, volunteers, MPs and members of the local community to demand radical action at a prison damned as inhumane and brutal. I'm ashamed for me. I'm ashamed for all of you. I'm ashamed for Wandsworth Prison and the, the, the government and the whole bloody country. An incredibly nasty place, both to serve a sentence and to work. Quaker chaplain Liz Bridge spent eight years volunteering at Wandsworth until the end of last year and says it's failing at the most basic level. She's one of those behind tonight's meeting, hoping to shine a light on a prison rife with problems. A place like Wandsworth maims human beings who work there just as much as it does those who were imprisoned there. David Shipley served time at Wandsworth for fraud. He says it was a lawless, destructive environment drugs and the corruption, corrosive for everyone. If you listen to the MOJ, you might believe that drugs are all flown in by drone or people stuff pigeons and throw them over the walls. And that, some of that does happen, but the, the reality is most drugs and other contraband that come into our prisons are brought in by people who work there. When lockdown first began, the only people coming in and out of that prison were prison officers and the supply of drugs continued. And that is because there is so much money available that, you know, in, in, in any prison like Wandsworth, it just takes a few officers to be corrupted and that supply of drugs will continue. The Prison Officers Association told us it refutes the claim the majority of drugs come via officers. But there's no doubt the supply of drugs at Wandsworth is an issue, with criminal networks operating inside the jail, leaving prisoners addicted, and families outside being extorted. But Pia Sinner, who was credited with turning Liverpool prison around when she was governor there, says cutting the demand for drugs among desperate prisoners is really key. Why is there demand for drugs in prison? And the reason there's demand for drugs in prison is because people are sitting in their cells 23 hours a day with nothing to do. What needed to happen in Liverpool was the men needed to be busy, they needed to be occupied. And you can do those things in prison by creating purposeful activity and creating a regime that allows them to do that. Well, they're on lockdown now. Uh, all week, apparently, it's going to be 24-7 lockdown. Julie and Lynn both have sons in Wandsworth. Lynn says she's terrified of the toll it's taking. He's just locked away all the time. He's just so stressed over everything. This is just making me ill now. It's just a place of hell, absolute hell. So what do you hope happens now after today? Serious changes. Yeah. Someone to be accountable for what's going on. What you really want to see is something happening. You want some action now. It's all right talking the talk, but you've got to walk the walk. But what would those changes look like? Labour's Ruth Cadbury hopes to be the prison minister if they win the next election. There's no vision, there's no strategy, there's no sense of purpose that has something that uh, seeks to ensure that prisoners get some rehabilitation, that they're not, it's not just a holding tank, but it actually improves lives so that prisoners come out stronger. But it needs to be properly managed, and this comes from the top. So there is an issue of leadership, isn't there? That's certainly what it looks like to me. A prison service spokesperson told us it was improving safety and conditions at Wandsworth, boosting staffing and investing millions in upgrading the prison. There's additional staff training to support vulnerable prisoners and £100 million is being spent to help stop the flow of contraband that is fueling violence. As the audience filed out, it was told to force conditions at the prison to the top of the political agenda. Among them, actress Sheila Hancock, a prison visitor for 50 years. It was a devastating evening. I mean, I visit prisons and I know what they're like, but to hear some of the prisoners in detail tell us the absolute depravity of our prisons at the moment. Whatever people have done 
it's a judgment of our civilization if we allow places like this to exist. If we don't take care of the weakest members of our society, we are failing. It's appalling. Wandsworth is far from the only prison in the country facing huge problems. It at least now has people speaking out to try to improve things. The question is, will anyone listen? Jackie Long reporting. Well, Tom Wheatley is the president of the Prison Governors Association. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Filthy, overcrowded and rife with violence. What do you make of that? That's such a damning indictment of a prison in 2024. Uh, it is a damning indictment. Um, uh, unfortunately, it's not unusual. Um, Wandsworth's a, a Victorian prison built in the 1850s, um, as is much of the prison estate. And it's no, um, you know, it's no coincidence that many of those kind of prisons, those inner city um, reception prisons built in Victorian times, are the prisons that are really struggling to deliver safe and meaningful regimes to prisoners. We're seeing problems, though, across the prison estate. So what's going wrong? What's going so badly wrong, in your view? Uh, well, in the, in the 30 or so years that I've been in the prison service, the, uh, the population in prisons has doubled. So we're, we are um, incarcerating twice as many people in 2024 as we were in 1993. Um, that's uh, 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 the result of various governments' penal policy, but it's also um, various governments who haven't resourced that change. So a place like Wandsworth uh, requires a significant amount of maintenance to keep things like heating systems going, to, you know, to make sure that the most basic systems work, and that money has been used elsewhere to keep prisons afloat um, because public spending hasn't been there. There's, of course, an issue with money, and the government says that they are putting more money in the system, but there's also an issue with the prisons themselves. Earlier in the week, we um, saw an issue with drugs in one Wandsworth prison. Who's running the prisons at the moment? Is it the governors? So, I mean, governors are running their prisons. Uh, governors are in, in some cases, almost impossible circumstances. They're trying to run a prison where they're unable to provide a basic regime to prisoners, where they get prisoners out of their cell and they do something purposeful with them. Um, that's uh, as a result of a, their inability to recruit and retain appropriate staff. Um, but the maintenance of the site, you know, the, the buildings, the infrastructure, it's very, very difficult to get people to care about a place when, you know, the sewers are backed up and the heating doesn't work and you... you can't find a shower that works to have a shower midweek. So that, that sort of contract between the staff and the, the prisoner, you know, that we will look after you and provide you with a decent place to live while you do the things that you need to do to reduce your risk of reoffending, we're unable to maintain that contract. In Jackie's report there, Lynn and Julie wanted some sort of hope, some sort of change, and someone to be held accountable for this. Yeah. Do you bear some responsibility for what's going on? Uh, well, uh, I represent prison governors. Um, and prison governors do bear some responsibility, but prison governors are working exceptionally hard. The governor of Wandsworth and her team are working exceptionally hard in almost impossible circumstances. That's really the issue. What we need to do, if we decide that we want to send as many prison, prisoners, people to prison as we currently do, for as long as we currently want them to be there, we need to find a way for pay, to pay for it. The alternative is to change penal policy. The alternative is to do what they've done in the Netherlands where they have empty prisons. Um, that requires real political will and... And just briefly, Tom Wheatley, do you, see, do you see that happening? Do you see that change uh, happening anytime soon? Are you hopeful for well, that? I would have to be hopeful, otherwise I couldn't carry on doing what I'm doing. Okay. Tom Wheatley, thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you. Thank you.